But now, turning our attention overseas tonight, a lot of crises around the world. Biden, uh, that whole team, continues to resort to tired political platitudes rather than confronting what are real growing threats, China, Iran, Russia. Biden told Putin on Sunday that the U.S. will, quote, act decisively if the Russian leader invades Ukraine. I'm sure he's shaking in his boots. Ask yourself, does anyone really think Vladimir Putin cares what Joe Biden thinks? Does he not know he's a cognitive mess? Yes, he does. And get this, the Biden State Department is being mocked tonight after a bizarre series of tweets about Secretary of State Tony Blinken's Spotify playlist, his music playlist. Have you heard the news? Secretary Blinken is now on Spotify. Check out the latest recommended playlist the department tweeted. I'll ask, amid growing threats around the world, real threats, the globe, uh, can this be the priority of our State Department? Putin, President Xi, Kim Jong-un, the Mullahs in Iran, they see what the rest of us are seeing, an administration totally incapable or unwilling to stand up to America's adversaries, and the threats are only intensifying. Look at the new report from The Wall Street Journal detailing increase in cooperation with China and Russia, and by the way, that also includes Iran, detailing ambitious joint military exercises, deep collaboration on advanced weapons technology. And over in Tehran, well, the Iranian president continues to lash out and stoke wider kind of conflict, claiming former President Trump, Mike Pompeo, they've got to face trial for taking out Soleimani, or Tehran will seek revenge. By the way, today's the anniversary of his death. Good riddance to that evil terrorist and the anniversary of President Trump making the decisive military decision to keep America and the world safe. Here with reaction, former Secretary of State, Fox News contributor Mike Pompeo. I wish I knew the story behind this because the fact that you were able to nail this guy is on a commercial flight. You knew he's on that flight. And you wait for everybody else to be safe, every private citizen. You take them right out on the tarmac, one of the best military efforts in our lifetime. Well, Sean, happy New Year to you. You, you went around the world and the threats pretty, uh, pretty accurately there, sadly. Uh, you're right about these threats uh, from Iran. They're unprecedented. You have a nation state, the world's largest state sponsor of terror, very capable, saying that they're going to arouse every Muslim in the world to martyr President Trump and me. Uh, that's, uh, that's something that's not been done before. Uh, it's a real security risk, and I think it tells you something about how they're thinking about this administration. We, I, I wouldn't change a thing about what we recommended to the president. Uh, we were defending the United States of America. We were keeping the American people safe. Qasem Soleimani was actively engaged in plotting against America, and we took military actions, lawful military action, to make sure that no Americans were killed. Uh, it was a good decision. And now we have the responsibility, the American leadership has the responsibility to make sure and keep uh, every American safe against the threat from Iran. And to see, to see President Raisi me, out there talking about uh, putting President Trump and me on trial, and then if that doesn't work, having us assassinated uh, is deeply unprecedented and a real responsibility for the leadership team. Well, it's a real threat to, to your personal safety and President Trump's personal safety. Um, uh, I would take that seriously. But... I don't think Vladimir Putin is amassing 200,000 troops on the Ukrainian border for no reason at all. Nor do I think that the, the saber rattling and flying fighter jets over Taiwan airspace is, is more than a message from China. After the Olympics, my prediction is, is they will try their, quote, reunification with China. Am I wrong? Uh, Sean, I, I think that's likely. It's absolutely the case. These are all connected as well. They're connected by the central thesis of an administration that's not prepared to defend the things that matter most to America, America's security. Uh, we demonstrated for four years how deterrence work, right? Ronald Reagan knew peace through strength. We talked about America first and getting it right. Uh, we made clear to the Chinese we would impose real costs with them. Uh, I don't think Vladimir Putin would have behaved in the way he's behaving today, coercing Europe, coercing the West, uh, having conversations with the president of the United States, walking away thinking, I think I'll send a few more troops to the Ukrainian border. Remember, this is a president who chose uh, not to send military assistance to the Ukrainians when they took one-fifth of Ukraine. I suspect Vladimir Putin thinks that the things that Biden is telling him today are not likely to be followed through on. I hope he's wrong. I hope President Biden is determined to protect America's interests wherever they are. I, I suspect that leaders around the world uh, don't see that. Uh, they saw what happened in Afghanistan. They saw a pipeline shut down in southern, uh, southeast part of the United States, and we did virtually nothing. 
I hope this administration will begin to restore the deterrence that America had these past four years that kept a lot of us safe. If I'm right, and we have this, it's not that I'm right, we know that there is this new alliance with China and Russia, and but it also includes Iran, uh, which makes me the most nervous because if you marry radical Islam with weapons of mass destruction uh, and, convert, and a convert-or-die philosophy, that can only lead to one thing, potentially even a modern-day holocaust. A danger that the world better never ha ever have to face, but I'm afraid more every day that in fact we're headed in that direction. Thoughts? The the weaker America is, the more appeasement we show. Going to the negotiating table, even as we speak, Sean, going to the negotiating table in in Vienna to talk to the Iranians about striking a deal to get back in the 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 cruddy deal that we had in the JCPOA, the nuclear deal. Uh, that's the kind of appeasement that creates the very risk that you talk about. I assure you the Israelis are concerned about that as well. They're concerned about Iran getting a nuclear weapon on President Biden's watch. They know that American weakness puts real risk on Israel, real risk that you could have some kind of holocaust. And we shouldn't forget, Sean, too, add Venezuela and Cuba into that mix with China, Iran, and Russia. And you've got real risk right here in our hemisphere, right 90 miles off of America's shore. Uh, we, we need to do the things that the Trump administration did to protect America. I hope this administration will begin to show that kind of real resolve and strength. Yeah, well, the world sees that Joe Biden is weak, and they're obviously taking advantage of it. And that deal, that Iranian deal that, that brought paint plane loads, cargo plane loads of cash and other currency for the mullahs in Iran uh, would also allow them to get nuclear weapons by 2025 anyway. The worst deal in history. Uh, Mr. Secretary, Happy New Year. Thank you for being with us. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.